building an AI app entirely with Cloud in just one hour. Here's what I was able to deliver here, and I'm going to demonstrate what I got and how I got there and kind of the challenges I faced along the way. So first, some context. My name is Mario Peshev. I'm running uh, several companies. One of them is a development agency, one of them is business consultancy. I have a few more, but bottom line, I understand development, I understand business and marketing, and I'm always trying to optimize and refine some processes. And what we do and what we've been doing in 2024 a lot is experimentation, testing, A-B testing, and like just speeding this entire process up so that we can deliver more value for our clients. So naturally, we are trying to build more apps, more tools, more prompts, more pretty much everything to deliver better value and be able to launch more ad campaigns and programmatic SEO and landing pages and everything with the power of what's currently available on the market. However, my team is pretty packed with building enterprise-grade solutions. So whenever I'm trying to build something quickly and just prototype it, it's going to take weeks or at least a week to actually get it up and running. So what I'm doing instead is I'm going rogue. I'm doing the solo route, either working myself with consultants, with freelancers as part of my consultancy or one of my other prototype bootstrapping businesses to figure out what is humanly possible with the power of AI, automation, app builders, site builders, in order to solve specific results for me and for my customers. So what I wanna showcase today is kind of how I use Cloud to generate an AI app that I've been trying to build over the past few weeks with different app builders, with WordPress, with all of the other tools that I have in my arsenal. And whether Cloud is great for you or not, you can decide for yourself. Still mixed feelings here, but I definitely love what I was able to achieve in just one hour and in probably three dollars that I've spent on API calls. So let's dive in. First off, what we have here is an ICP persona generator. That's one example of kind of what I was able to build in an hour with some uh, samples. And while still it's Again, it's still work in progress, so it may not be super stable yet, but you're going to dive right in. So essentially what you do here is go to the persona generator and uh, you type in a business description. I've used my agency as an example. So there is an international martech agency. We do marketing and technology. We work with SMEs. We do go-to-market strategy and experiments. And we are the company that coined WordPress retainers back in 2015. So we've specialized in scaling SMEs with uh, development, SEO, HubSpot, and stuff. So this is kind of the core premise. You uh, head in and you put in the business description, then you type, uh, click generate personas, and you get samples and, and some uh, kind of trials of different personas, like different business types, ICPs, however you want to call them, that are going to be great customers for your product. This is pretty important for us because when we do all sorts of landing pages and building offers and kind of niche solutions, both for us and for our dozens of clients on the agency front and hundreds of clients on my advisory business, one of the first things that we do is we run an audit for a business, we analyze what works, how it works, what are the ICPs, total addressable market, ideal clients, preferred contracts, the offers with the best unique uh, selling proposition. There are a bunch of things in the kind of initial audit advisory kind of consultancy discovery session framework that are always kind of necessary. So sometimes it's just easier even before hopping on a call with a client, you just run this and kind of try to, to pump up some data and, and kind of use it ahead of time. So once you kind of pick the persona that kind of resonates with you, and of course you can kind of keep generating more, you uh, can generate pain points and you get what is this person, what is this ICP facing right now? Kind of what are they struggling with? And again, you can generate this, select that, and then you click generate headlines and captions. So this is kind of what it does. So this is a prototype I saved in here. The way I approach that is, um, and I'm going to reveal it here with you, I've been trying to build that over the past few weeks in several different ways. So again, on the agency side, we do WordPress, it's our specialty. We've been doing it for 14 years. We have seven WordPress core contributors. We definitely know WordPress, no question about that. We've scaled dozens of sites past 100 million page views per month, enterprises, telecoms. I'm not going to dive into this. Uh, it's not advertorial in nature. So we can build that. However, in order to do that, in order to build that solution internally, uh, we would have to set aside a team or at least a couple of people building um, integration with an AI chatbot, making sure it's securely transferring information back and forth, creating a plugin for that, creating templates or designs for that, making sure it's compliant with different teams, like lots of other things to make sure it's safe and secure and works and like a lot of that. So I took different routes 
Uh, there are kind of some existing plugins, pretty rough, not very extensible and so forth. So it definitely has to be custom. I went on and tested Bobo and, and Frontly and some of the other tools. They were definitely promising. I liked some of the solutions that they got there, but they also had some quirks, right? Either some bugs or, you know, just some quirks along the, the edges or specific things that you cannot necessarily build or you're constrained in the way you kind of build that. Let's say turning a table into kind of a single page form with an Ajax that's kind of rendering the results on your page. And like, lots of these things are not necessarily working consistently and like super efficiently with some of the existing ad builders. This morning, in particular, I looked into uh, kind of one of the marketing podcasts that I've been following, and they were talking about Anthropic apps and, and cloud apps and the ability to build that. So I looked it up. I actually couldn't find anything helpful for me, but I found this guide for building apps without writing code on cloud by Jim Clyde Monks, kind of discussing kind of how you can start building apps with cloud and like it's essentially an extension for uh, kind of an extension for Visual Studio Code, which is one of the kind of development environments for for coders. Uh, so you can set up cloud dev and you can kind of start typing. Now, if you're not a developer, I would completely understand that. Again, I've been trying to work out different angles, either work with my team to build that internally, but it was just slower. And it also doesn't help building prototypes for clients, especially working with them alongside. So it wasn't a great solution for specific cases. Of course, we productize everything. That's kind of a prototype. Make sure it's stable, like running behind CDNs and pushing data to S3 or proper database and whatnot. But for prototypes and kind of small SaaS demos, it's definitely something that we're, I'm trying to speed up and optimize and just make work faster and more optimal for starters, demonstrate, do a proof of concept before we can actually prioritize properly. So I tried the app builders. Again, they weren't super flexible and efficient and weren't really solving the problems that I needed. Not a great kind of outcome for me. So the best next thing I could do is try to find a hybrid way of some coding with some AI. Now, having said that, um, I've probably only edited two lines of code during this one hour demo. Uh, and they were primarily just changing a prompt text or updating an API key. So literally no code whatsoever. What you kind of need here is just having Visual Studio Code available, which you can download for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm running Linux here. So again, it's, it's, it works on pretty much everything. Uh, and you may need to install Node.js and NPM uh, just so that you can run Express and, and kind of run some of that server-based API endpoint infrastructure locally on your server before you deploy elsewhere. But again, the, the app can guide you there. Uh, you know, essentially Cloud is giving you prompts and stuff. It's pretty versatile again and helping you go along the way. So what do we have here? First off, let's uh, let's jump in and go to the demo. Uh, so I'm going to open it right here and uh, we are going to enter a business description. So again, I'm going to add that with, let's say that we have X. So X is a uh, social network ran by Elon Musk. It um, it has like 300 million active users. Well, maybe it's 900 million. I'm not sure, um, you know, I can check later, but that's just for proof of concept. So 900 million active users, including editors, journalists, investors, startup indies, tech founders, um, DTC experts, and so forth. So this is kind of the network. It competes with other networks like LinkedIn, Instagram, Thread. So it's just kind of a business description to you. So first thing we want to do is we want to generate personas. What does that mean? We are trying to establish if, if we work with Elon, if we kind of want to reach out to Elon and kind of find some problems, some solutions that we can potentially kind of get uh, and kind of solve for for him and for the team. What are the possible ideal people who are interested in the platform and working with that? So again, there are some quirks here, but hey, uh, who do we have here? So we have John Smith, 35 years old, uh, San Francisco, tech savvy, uses iOS, works at a uh, mid-sized tech startup, VP of engineering, wants to connect with investors and partners. This is kind of one possible persona. That's actually quite true. So I have lots of friends, investors and VCs and other angel investors as well on X who are super active there and, and just hanging out. Again, it's less censored than LinkedIn. It's not as aggressive as Reddit. It's not as kind of visual and start to be creatively uh, freebie as Instagram. And it's not like family oriented as Facebook. So they're spending a lot of time on X 
chatting with other investors. So it's pretty likely that someone who's uh, looking for a Series A or Series B, for example, would definitely kind of look into X. Uh, what do we have here? 28 or, uh, years old female, New York, uh, income 90 grand, digital media startup, marketing major, professional network, connect with influencers. Well, yes, especially for certain niches, you have lots of social influencers. X has them as well and so on. So we have some of the other examples. Um, and again, there are some quirks. Again, this app has been built for just an hour. So there's a lot of that has to be polished. But let's say we're going to work with John. So we have X, we know what X is, the social network. We have John, who's like a tech, uh, iOS dude, VP of engineering, 12 years of experience. So we dive in here and say, hey, let's generate pain points. Like what is John struggling with right now? We know that um, he's very tech savvy, wants to connect with investors. Uh, he's uh, kind of working in a tech company, probably kind of in a again, mid-sized tech startup, VP of engineering, so leading a team. So we're trying to figure out what are the, the challenges that Josh is facing. So some examples here are finding the right investors, worrying that his expertise in current technology will become outdated, especially with things like AI that we are reviewing right now, by the way, concerning that he's missing opportunities, anxious taking time away. All of these are pretty legit challenges. So we can just pick two of them and, and head in and kind of generate some headlines and captions. Kind of This is kind of the last point that we have so far for an hour. So what's the point of this one? If we want to do organic social, if we want to do paid ads, if we want to do email sequences or um, anything that's uh, client facing and user facing, even brochures or billboard ads, whatever it is, we would want to kind of dive in here and kind of figure out who, what's the, what does the business represent? What does the business look like? What does the persona look like? What are the problems that we're solving for that specific persona? And we kind of want to, um, uh, go through that hamster wheel and find uh, a, a proper problem to solve. So let's jump right in and I'm um, actually pretty happy with the results, but we know who John is and what X is. We know they have certain problems finding investors and expertise. So imagine these are some social copies or kind of ad copies. Find the right investor. Struggling to con connect with investors who share your vision. Our executive network connects with vetted investors looking for great ideas, right? So if you're X or you're trying to be X adjacent, like a business that plays well with X, you can use that for investors. Your experience is secure, right? Remember one of the problems that uh, John had is worrying that his expertise in current technologies will become outdated quickly in this fast changing world. So what do we have here? Your expertise is secured. Don't let your skills become outdated. Our online course certifications Ensure you stay ahead in today's fast-changing lens landscape. Or VP seeking new opportunities. Or time to build your network. Like this is going through all of the challenges that we have here and kind of pulling in here. So uh, this is just one example of a tool that we can effectively build uh, with with Cloud. And this is kind of one example of kind of what we can do in an hour. Uh, so the way that works, I'm going to kind of quickly showcase on the Cloud end. Uh, what it did is uh, I told, and I'm not sure if I can find like the earlier prompts, it's been uh, kind of an hour worth of work, uh, but yeah, it's probably out there. I can look it up. Uh, all right, let's see if we have that. Yeah, so there we go. I can find the first one. Uh, so we we have the first from, oh, I'm trying to look this up. Um, uh, the, the first one, okay, let me the history again. So I want to build a web app that takes an input from the user in the text area for business description and yada, yada, yada. So it kind of goes through that description, but for some reason, it's not really displaying it here. And then, um, kind of what Claude told me, oh, all right, there it is. Uh, business description sends it to Claude and receives a list of possible personal definitions, right? So I'm giving it a pretty human detailed answer over here. And Claude says, all right, so we are going to create structure, build the HTML file, create a JavaScript for client side, create the server side logic and stuff. So I'm going to create these files here and I'm just giving, okay, approve. I give you access to my file system. So it's starting to create the personas. It says, you know, you can install NPM. I actually didn't have Node and NPM here. Uh, it's a new laptop I bought a couple of weeks ago and they just haven't really set it up. So I kind of just went through the exercise. It worked uh, pretty much flawless. Either way, it kind of worked. So it, it was able to kind of create that and they went on uh, essentially going through a bunch of different cycles and, and just yielding different issues that I've been uh, having with, with the request, right? So for instance, the authentication with Cloud wasn't working. 
So Claude had to rebuild several different authentication styles with authorization, with bearer, with like uh, different OAuth kind of uh, API calls things in order to make it work. So it it, it read my, uh, it checked whether my server is up and running and really went through deep dive troubleshooting. I was very impressed. And sometimes there's this uh, kind of privacy paradigm. You don't want to share too much data with AI. So I've been very careful in kind of what am I sharing and how. Right, so this has been limited to that specific project, that specific uh, program. Uh, all of the process were limited to Node and the execution of that process. So I've been careful on what I've been sharing, but of course, um, take it with a grain of salt. If you're worried, if you have any issues with AI, definitely don't let it overtake the entire environment. But um, again, needless to say, this this actually created these three files and has been iterating a bunch of different times. Uh, I've been pretty happy with kind of some of these experiences. For example, this is one example of the prompt, you know, authentication worked out and say, great, it worked. Now let's list down all persona generating separate cards with checkboxes in front of them. I want to be able to select one or I want to run it like a script. The next step would be clicking the checkboxes for the personas and running additional prompts, right? So what Clodo does is it is, is that, okay, we'll need to mod the HTML and CSS, which is the normal part of the markup. I'll need to edit this file. Then I also need to edit the triggering. So I need to add the checkboxes and the callbacks. So I need to edit this and so on and so on, right? So you can go and keep prompting as you do with a human or a developer in your team. And you can build the prototype in a pretty easy and resilient way. So that's it. That's definitely um, an interesting concept. I'm going to try it out with a few more examples. This is the, the Cloud Dev project, which is an indie project by uh, this uh, uh, Sodri uh, guy. I hope I'm not butchering his name, uh, but it's kind of an indie project, but it's it's uh, fairly lightweight, so it's not really causing any issues. And you can kind of see how it works, how it uh, fetches data uh, and so on. Uh, what it's really great for is reading files and writing to files. And whenever it's writing, it's actually providing a before after so you see you see what exactly is uh, getting changed you can of course sync that to version control as it's uh, kind of supposed to do but this is again uh, one pretty powerful example of a tool that that works and you can also host online and you can ask ai to how to host that online and kind of run as an internal project internally now several disclaimers several things i want to really call out here first off Make sure you're not deploying to production. You're not building a product for something that you don't understand. It's quite possible that your API keys get leaked and um, you know you lose hundreds or thousands of dollars of API credits because someone gets access to your data or you push it to a public repository or something like that. So don't push anything to production that you don't understand that hasn't been vetted by a software professional and, and all that. Second, try to actually build and productize it as a proper product afterwards. So. You know, whenever you test that, it's kind of a proof of concept. You limit it to like some internal tests or some internal users. But then ideally, you you are going to want to productize that. Uh, and third, again, this is a proof of concept. This doesn't include a database. It's not hosted on Vercel or any other like a digital ocean droplet or show. So there's still more work to actually productize it and build it in public. That said, it doesn't mean that this isn't a product that you can use with your customers and sit down next to your ICP or sit down with a client or sit down with your team and actually showcase them or launch it internally to help them level up their business knowledge and build other things that are leveling up the company knowledge as well. So that's it. Once again, if you like it, please hit like and comments. Um, and you know, if you subscribe, that's going to be awesome, of course. Uh, I'm here to share B2B insights and also my MarTech knowledge out here. Obviously, AI has been a massive trend lately, and that's why I've been covering solving solutions with AI and connecting and tapping AI to different things, because it's one of the core things consultancies and agencies have been focusing on. Uh, and this is what we uh, across our businesses are also spending time on as well. Thank you.